Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a very interesting custom knife overview to share with you guys. This is a Sharp by Design Void XL in full zirconium. Now, if you are not familiar with my channel, normally what I do is I do a full review um, because they are production knives. They are readily available. They have price tags that, um, you know, I would say <coughs> not always most, but a lot of people can afford. Uh, knives in this territory are extremely hard to get a hold of, and even if you have the opportunity, they are very, very expensive because they are made largely by hand. There are some machine processes involved, largely by hand um, and uh, one at a time. So these are small batch, um, and they are uh, either made specifically for the person who is ordering them, or uh, they're being made, you know, in a way that's like it's going to go up for sale on Instagram and be immediately immediately sold, literally seconds after it's posted, right? So I don't review, I, I don't think a review of these knives is going to be super beneficial for a lot of people, but I will talk about elements and you can take away from this what you want. I'm going to tell you guys right now so that people who don't want to be here don't have to waste their time. Uh, Sharp by Design knives are made in the United States, custom by Brian Nadeau, and, and it is, I, I believe his prices start at about a thousand dollars. This knife was purchased um, by Mr. Uh, Noel underscore knives on Instagram. You can give him uh, a follow, please. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys this type of knife content. It's purchased for about $1,350, which is right around what he went, he purchased on the secondary market, but that's right around what it would have gone for, uh, sold directly by Brian Nadeau. So yes, this is an expensive knife. Yes, expensive knives exist. Yes, there is a market for them. It is what it is. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm going to measure this. We're going to do a couple of the things that we normally do in a knife review. We'll go ahead and measure the Void XL. This guy is coming in at eight and a quarter inches overall. The blade length is coming in at 3.75 inches. Uh, and then your cutting edge also just about 3.75 inches. Something that Brian Nadeau is very good at is the amount of blade or amount of cutting edge that you get for the size of knife. It is very rare in the knife world that you get an, an uh, eight and a quarter inch knife with a 3.75 inch blade. Usually you're looking at three and a half inches, right? So an extra, I know it's, it's like an, oh wow, an extra quarter inch. Well. That's a lot in terms of knife, uh, you know, it, the knife world, I guess. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and do just a couple of size comparisons here. Um, up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, as you can see there, and the Ontario Rat Model 2. And there you go. A couple others, some uh, familiar faces here, the Spyderco Para 3. There you go. And the Benchmade Bug Out. And then I've got a couple more for you here. Right. Um, so for those of you watching this video, if you are Sharp by Design aficionados, you might be curious to see it up against uh, the Sharp by Design Arch Nemesis, which is a big old boy. So there it is up against the Arch Nemesis. And a lot of you probably have this guy, which is a production, Riat made production uh, uh, Evo Typhoon. So the Evo Typhoon coming in at about eight inches, so just a little bit shorter. Um, so there you go. Next up, um, I mean, weigh, doing weight and stuff, this is zirconium, so it's going to weigh a lot more than titanium. I'll weigh this guy uh, for you guys real quick, but just keep in mind with this being a custom knife, I mean, Brian Nadeau is working with zirconium, Timask is uh, Mokutai, uh, I mean, gosh, carbon fiber, There's, I mean, there's a million different combinations of things that could cause the weight to vary. This particular guy coming in pretty heavy at 5.29 ounces. I'd be willing to bet if this were made out of titanium, you'd be looking at four and a, you probably would shave an ounce off of this or something like that. Um, so yeah, there you go. I don't know that I'm gonna be, I don't wanna touch this thing with my tools. I'm, I'm really not going to. The pivots are proprietary. A lot of people complain about that. Um, let me say this, uh, for those of you still with me at four minutes and whatever, five minutes into the video. 
I have handled a lot of knives, and every time I talk about a sharp by design custom, I say the same thing. I've not handled every single knife in the world, and there are certainly many knives in this territory, and, I'm, and by this territory, I mean the custom knife world, the really expensive end of the knife world. There's lots of stuff that I have not experienced, so I can only speak to what I have experienced. Um, so given everything that I have handled, sharp by design makes far and away the nicest knives in the world as far as what I have experienced. Um, I've handled some great stuff, right? You're, m countless uh, knives from custom makers, but also, you know, uh, knife companies like Shiro Groff that boast super, super duper um, levels of uh, like complex machine work and things like that. Um, Brian Nadeau is j he's an absolute wizard. Um, I have never handled anything that even comes close and that's even counting some of that stuff, right? So, um, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, the idea of, you know, like the, the materials, the same types of materials are available to him as are available to many other custom knife makers. And he certainly works with materials that are available at a lower price point, but does that make it the same thing? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not even close. Um, these knives are incredible. And the reason I'm talking about this, right, segueing back to uh, what I was talking about with the pre proprietary hardware, um, I have never had a fit and finish issue with a Sharp by Design, uh, whether it's one of his production models, which you can actually see here does have a Torx head, um, or his custom stuff. This is the second, um, or this is my arch nemesis. Second arch nemesis I've handled, and I don't know how many custom Brian Nadeau knives I've handled. These customs do not have a way to adjust the pivot, and that's, uh, I was listening to an episode of the Knife Nuts podcast where he talks about how tightly these things are pressed fit together, um, that, you know, if there's an issue with them, he wants people to send them back, and I, as far as I understand, that is extremely rare. I have never Never felt an issue with the action, the centering, the lockup. I've never felt compelled to open one of these knives up. Now, does that mean that, you know, that it's not necessary? No. Uh, believe it or not, I know people always have a hard time, uh, you know, believing this. Um, yeah, a lot of people who do buy stuff like this absolutely use it. I, I know that from the perspective of somebody who is not buying this stuff, the easiest assumption, the easiest road to go down is these people are buying these things and they're not using them. Or these knives are just very, very pretty and they're not actually designed to be used. Both of those things could not be further from the truth. Um, these knives are incredibly durable, incredibly well made. They absolutely, I mean, yes, they are definitely collected. I mean, like nature of the beast, what's going to end up happening with this stuff is a lot of people are going to collect them and cherish them. And yes, in many cases, they're not necessarily cutting or performing better than a knife that costs one fifth or in some cases one tenth the price. That's not why people are buying these. But if you are under the impression that these are not meant to be used or that they are somehow more delicate because they are art knives, no, you're mistaken. A lot of people who pick these up absolutely do use them. In fact, the um, arch nemesis that I, the first one that I handled was uh, definitely like, that was like a daily user for, for um, the gentleman who sent it in. So yeah, that is absolutely the case. Um, but the materials that he's working with, you know, uh, as far as I understand, he works with Nitro V, S90V, Damasteel, Damacore, and probably a number of other things. I don't know what this steel is. I'm going to guess it's S90V. Um, in any case, it's very beautiful. Take a look at that mirror polished edge. <laughs> Absolutely stunning there on that edge. Very, very nice. If you're, you know, this, this is kind of how videos like this go. It's more of a show and tell, right? What we have here is zirconium. I'm actually really jealous. Um, I, uh, when the day comes for me to acquire my next sharp by design knife, I will have some element of it, uh, in zirconium just because I don't know why I just really, I really like how zirconium looks, right? We have these polished areas in here, these cutouts, really, really nice. I love the texture pattern. And this is the type of like hyper level, you know, precision machine quality that I just really love. We're actually going to zoom up on this area around the pivot here so you guys can get a nice look. Let me stable, stabilize my camera. How this lips up around the pivot, those little, little, that micro texturing, right? 
all of this, every last line and every last little area is just so unbelievably perfect. I think maybe the edge would be a nice, that'd be a nice close up, right? Get some of that reflectivity in the edge. Real nice. All the way out to the tip, you can see exactly how perfect, <laughs> how absolutely perfect this all is. Little things like the lockup, the geometry of the lockup, and just get this little ridge that the insert comes to. That's just a little teeny tiny detail. This whole thing right here, this insert could have just been flat, but he didn't do that. He gave it its own character. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing to me. It just cracks me up. The pocket clip itself is just a work of art. Look at this. This area in here that's been carved out. And then we have the flats up here. We have a little little bit of a bevel uh, on the side of the pocket clip. And that keeps it um, nice and easy to interact with uh, in terms of you know the human hand. The way that it connects with the... Let me go ahead and fold that plate up. The way that it connects with the frame, the screw holding it in place is obviously hidden, but the way that it's just machined perfectly into the, oh, the scales. Speaking of perfection, I'm going to talk about a risky move when you are um, you know, creating a backspacer is to create a slot that will emphasize exactly how perfect or imperfect the centering is. These little U-shaped areas in a backspacer or V-shaped areas sometimes, that's the uh, maker going, watch this. I I'm going to show you exactly, I'm going to emphasize that area. If you make this flat or you bring the backspacer back here, all you have to judge centering on is the left and right side of the frame. No, we have, now we have this little teeny tiny area where it's really going to, kind of like when you look down the sights of a firearm and you're trying to get everything lined up. That is absolutely perfect. If it is a hair off, this area will emphasize it, right? It is perfect. <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. This floating backspace, you're very, very nice. Um, I love the flipper tab. A lot of people don't like the flipper tabs on these. I do. This has the legendary sharp by design action. Let me zoom back out here, get it back to normal. Um, the sharp by design action, of course, it's different. Let me see. You know what? Maybe I um, will get a flashlight here and we'll zoom in so you guys can actually see what the heck it is that I'm talking about. Yeah, let's do that. Let me get let me get zoomed back in here. Mm, can you see? Oh, we almost had it. There's a little there right up at the top. Let me zoom in some more. Sorry, sorry. I know that some people really want to see this. See that little lip right there? So that's what's actually causing this unique, this unique feeling in the action, right? Um, the, uh, that lip, when you disengage it, when you go to flip it, I don't know why we're still using the flipper tap. The way that it breaks away from that lip causes a very uh, unique action, or causes a, a unique feeling in the action that is not present on anything else because this is the only detent system that's like this and it's present in um, my uh, Arch Nemesis and it's also present in um, some of the less expensive production ones. Um, these are also, you know, I know people are going to ask, those are limited runs. They do pre-orders and then they sell and then they do another batch one or two years later, right? Anything that has the Sharp by Design name on it is going to sell. And it's not because people like me go, it's so great. It's so, I mean, like this, sure, that has a lot to do with it, but it's not like people haven't known, right? That Sharp by Design is doing this type of incredible work and creating this you know, creating knives with this unique feeling detent system um, that, and I didn't really explain that. That lip detent um, has a, a much more crisp breakaway. Instead of a, a ball, it's, you can really hear it in the arch nemesis. Ready? Yeah. Um, and that uh, creates for a better feeling on the break of the detent. And then, of course, his surface work on the blade and the internal frame, right? These are running on bearings. All of that in combination with each other, um, it creates this truly perfect experience. Whether you are, like in the case of the void, whether you're using that slot to open the knife up, right, or you're using the flipper tab, um, it's just a different experience. Uh, and it feels good. It's not like a, ew, yuck. No, it, it feels really good, really nice. 
Um, it's just there. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much gushing that I can do on this. I'll, I'll talk about this. You know, it's not, like I said, it's not really a review, but I will say of all the stuff that um, he makes. Now, one of the most utilitarian designs that he does is the Evo Typhoon for sure. Like if I was going to EDC something, it would be the Evo Typhoon or the Void XL because it is actually super duper comfortable in the human hand. And I've, I've always maintained that I think um, Brian Nadeau makes the best pocket clips in the entire world, and it's not just for how they look. We actually have three different styles of pocket clips here. Um, but they're all doing roughly the same thing. This is all, you know, a lot of times now when I'm judging pocket clips, I, I'm actually using Sharp by Design knives, you know, in my mind as, a, as an example for something that's good. These all, you know, they're, it's not that they're all like super, like ultra deep. No, they're, they're reasonably deep, right? They're fairly wide clips. They're nice and rounded off, but they're not sticking way up high. You can see what's happening here is they start to drop from back here. They come down and they swoop up, right? A continuous upward swept tip uh, that will rise to meet pretty much any thickness of pocket seam. But most importantly, they are short enough and rounded off enough that when you are squeezing a knife like this, it doesn't bury itself into you, into the flesh where it hurts this is it's one of the most comfortable and well thought out clip designs that i've ever seen um i think that um you know it, pretty much everybody could take a note from this i'm not a knife maker knife designer right so i'm sure that i'm making some people roll their eyes but i've never never experienced a better pocket clip than the ones that and even the simpler ones that are on like the the evo typhoon here I've never experienced a better clip. This is so unbelievably comfortable. That jumping extending out to a functional area on the spine, that's real nice. This is a super duper thin clip point. This is hollow ground, by the way. I'm sure you guys can tell. Hollow ground, very aggressive clip point blade with a needle-like tip. <laughs> um, yeah, this thing is legitimately uh, set up to be a wonderful EDC knife. Nice. Um, contact with the, there is no, I know a lot of times, like when we talk about bank vault lockup on a uh, frame lock, what that means is, is under reasonable force that that lock is not going to, um, slip at all. It's not going to, um, disengage, right? I've never felt even the slightest, even when I am wrenching on, so I'm not going to do it on this one, but even my production uh, Evo Typhoon, something about the way that he does the geometry and the total amount of surface contact with the insert, no amount of wrenching on, thing, on that thing is going to um, cause it to even slip. I am convinced that you really would have to put this knife, like the handle, in a vise and beat on the spine of this with a sledgehammer to get it to move. I think this is a master of lock face geometry situation, and it really is. It's just like, again, emphasizing Brian Nadeau's ability to really put something together and make it perfect. Um, but this this knife, if I was going to EDC something out of, you know, all the stuff that I've seen from Brian's catalog, the Void XL makes a lot of sense. And this is all, I mean, just the, the way that this is set up is very organic. There's no double clutch or anything. By the time that flipper tab gets down to your finger, that detent lip is well up on the face of the blade so that you can turn it and you can give it a, a couple of little shakes there. It's nice and smooth. It's a different type of action, right? I don't judge the action on whether or not it is false shut. I judge it on whether or not it is consistent and feels like it is appropriate for the, um, the the strength of the detents, right? And this is all perfect. It's also its own thing, right? Um, carrying this knife, gripping this knife, cutting with it, right? Manipulating it. Really, really well thought out. I don't normally go for holes in the blade, but this is nicely done. The other thing that I really appreciate is that blade, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. It's just like... Uh, he knows, he knows what type of stuff that people like me complain about. And he's, it's not like, it's not like this was just done. Like, no, he's been doing this for a long time. That edge comes about as close as it possibly can without my finger being able to dig in there and touch it. Now, if you have skinny little fingers, maybe, but no, it, it's, it, it's little things like that that are, are thought out so well, right? It's the same way with the arch nemesis. 
you know, maybe up here, but you're not really going to be touching uh, the, the blade up there. Uh, and also the, um, the Evo Typhoon, it's exactly the same thing. It's as close as it can possibly be so we can get that blade height in relationship to the rest of the frame, make the flow and all the lines go together. But you can't touch it. <laughs> oh boy. This is just another fantastic example of a knife. Now, you know, people are still, you know, primed to complain. Okay, all right, all right, I get it. It's re they really are that nice. And I mean that when I say that. I've said that for a long I've said this for a long time. Sharp by Design knives are the greatest knives that I have ever experienced. Hands down, no comparison. These are these are the, the, in terms of precision and design and just function aesthetic, I mean, in so many different elements, these are the greatest folding knives in the world. Now, maybe there will come a day where I will, where I will experience something that I like more, but for right now, nothing is even close. These are the only knives that I have ever considered spending over my cap. The most I've ever spent on a knife was $1,500 and that was on my Rockstead Hego 2. Now, I want you guys to know, if you're not familiar with me, um, you're probably thinking, okay, so this is a, this is a guy who like n now lives in this custom knife world and he won't buy anything that's not in that. Ter no, that's not true. I regularly buy knives that are 100 or 200 or $50 or $500. I buy what I think feels like it's good for the money, but I, I have my limits just like everybody else. Um, I still enjoy less expensive stuff, very much enjoy it. But that Higo 2 was about the most I was comfortable paying, and to this day, I, I still feel like I overpaid on that knife by two to $300. Sharp by Design knives are the only knives that make me want to spend more than that and make me feel like I would be comfortable spending more than that. Now, I was actually in the process of ordering my own arch nemesis when I was surprised by my wife on our anniversary with this already created custom arch nemesis. Had she not done that, I absolutely without hesitation would have, you know, now this took me a while to save. I had to sell some stuff. It's not like I can just pull this out of my pocket because I'm not, I'm not rich. I have to find ways to pay for this stuff. I would have definitely dropped well over two grand for a knife from um, Sharp by Design. Sorry, we're shaking the camera all over the place. Um, so that they're the only, uh, Sharp by Design is the, are the only knives that make me want to spend that type of money um, after having handled them. And I, I know that I would feel good about it because again, I, I own a couple of these things, right? Um, these are amazing. Nobody needs a $1,300 knife, $1,000. Nobody, nobody needs that. In fact, I, I could make an argument that nobody ever really needs a knife that costs more than 50 bucks. But that's not why we're buying, that's, that's not why people in this area of the knife world are paying for this stuff. And I know that the common phrase is, well, well, there's a lot of dumb people out there. I would argue that you're dumb for wasting your time trying to alter the thought process of people who are going to buy this stuff, whether you have given them your opinion or not. That's a fact. You're not going to change anybody's mind, right? It's a waste of your own time. Don't even do it. <laughs> I've been making videos on this type of stuff for years. And a small paragraph from somebody who's confused by it is not going to alter that. Now, everybody's, of course, entitled to their own opinions. But I think we should just let each other spend our money how we want to spend it, right? I mean, I think everybody on this planet um, ha either has been exposed to or will soon be exposed to something that will cause them to break their own financial rules when it comes to value. Um, whether you're into shoes or tech, right? Knives, cars, right? Uh, there's always something out there for somebody. Nobody is, you know, everybody has a value system and there's no one on this planet who is perfectly capable of following it to a T. Eventually, you will find something that will shatter it. Not just break it or crack it, shatter it, right? So remember that the next time you judge someone, right? It's usually, honestly, it's usually firearm people. For that much, I could buy a gun. Well, Think about what you're saying. If you, if, like the P, I know I'm going off on a side rant. People who want to spend their money on that can spend their money on that. But if you're somebody who's not look like, it's not like people don't know, like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought of that. That's a universally better decision, right? Like, you know, if I'm, if I have a, a Christmas tree delivered to my house, well, obviously it's more convenient to open that box with a firearm 
<laughs> not, no, this that's for those people who feel compelled. I understand that that's an instinct to say that, but you'd say like a, a, a mental predisposition to the idea that a firearm is universally more valuable than a knife. No, it's circumstantial. And you have been taught to believe that because of the path that you've gone on, right? People who are into knives have no, uh, like if they're exclusively into knives, they have no interest in firearms. So to them, knives are universally more valuable than firearms. So that's just, that's the way that, you know, some people think. It does not mean that it's an absolute truth. So again, I circle back to my original point. You should only concern yourself with what you are spending your own money on and why. The, the, whole, uh, the whole idea here is that we buy things that, you know, based on our understanding of them, will bring us happiness for an infinite number of reasons, right? So as a knife person who, I got to be honest with you, has almost no interest in firearms, something like this, yeah, this is something that um, I uh, would spend this type of money on. And no amount of ridicule, ridicule is, is going to make me or anybody like me feel like it wasn't something that was a wise decision because it's for us. It brings us happiness. Or in the case of the knife community, right, um, it's something that you can share with other people, create stimulating conversation, this or that. A lot of this stuff is, you know, yeah, it's a functional tool. Um, but a lot of what you get back out of it is just the enjoyment from the stimulating conversation. Not to mention the fact that sharp by design knives will retain their value pretty much no questions asked. So um, also a lot of people who are picking up stuff like this can literally buy it, have it for a while, enjoy it, and then turn around and sell it for usually at least what they paid for it. Um, which is cool. That does not exist in all corners of every enthusiast world. Um, so anyways... A little side rant there, which I, you know, it's it's almost every, every part of every custom knife video that I do. These are just beautiful, and uh, it just makes me have, handling this makes me have that much more respect for Sharp by Design. Handling yet another example of just incredible, incredible attention to detail. Really, really cool. Anyways, uh, please make sure to follow Noel Knives on Instagram. Um, really nice of him to loan this to me for review. Yes, this is a loaner. We'll go back to him. Please also follow Sharp by Design on Instagram. Uh, if you if you want to if you're wanting to pick something like this up, your only hope is to follow them on uh, because you can't. I know people get you can't go to their website and expect to see like hundreds of knives in stock. If that's your expectation, Brian Nadeau is one person. Uh, that's that's not the type of thing that you're going to see on his website. The website is more so a gallery of his work that he's done in the past and what he's capable of doing. And then what you need to do on Instagram is wait until an opportunity presents itself for you to buy something. Um, so that's that's how this works. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more, more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.